Okay, let's have a look at this little microwave sensor that I purchased off of eBay. You can get these for about five bucks. Uh, we have uh, 12 to 24 volt DC power to supply it. And we have a normally open contact that closes when the sensor senses occupancy. It's less than 200 microwatts, so it doesn't have a lot of oomph. As we'll discover, it has a very hard time seeing anything through metal screening, window screens, things like that. It's got up to a 10 meter or over 30 foot detection range. We are going to be looking at it with it sitting upside down. I don't know what difference that makes really, but I didn't get a 30 foot detection range on it for people outdoors. We have three adjustments on it. When you move any of these adjustments, an LED flash is on it. We have a time setting up to 30 minutes and down to 10 seconds. And it even has a light threshold adjustment. Now, 2000 lux, that's 180 foot candles or more. And if you turn it fully clockwise, the light control setting, it basically disables the light sensing, and we'll see that. So let's take a look at this, play with it a little, and then we're going to use it in a really fun project that I think you're going to find has some differences to it that you might not have encountered working with occupancy sensing devices in the past. Today, let's test a... SK-807K-DC microwave sensor. Uh, this one is operating at 5.8 uh, gigahertz and it does not see through light walls and windows, at least not from this position in the middle of my office. It probably will if I put it next to a window, so we'll do some more extensive testing on it. But let's just look at our test rig. I have a piece of zip cord, ungrounded, and uh, the smooth side is applying power to the BZ50 power pack, which I'm using for to supply only power. Uh, and then the hot side also comes over to a relay contact on the microwave sensor. Then the side of the zip cord that is ribbed for your pleasure uh, is the neutral side so that's supplying a neutral to our load and also to our power pack. We have 24 volts from the power pack coming over to hot up this sensor and we're using its normally open relay contact to energize our load. Now I'm just going to keep my hand still and let's see how long it takes to time out. I have it on minimum and it takes a little bit. There we go. Simple wave of the hand brings it back on. Now to mask this for testing you just can't really do it. If I put a cardboard box on it and we'll weight it down a little to make sure it's not seeing out the crack and let it time out. It can still see me quite well right through the cardboard box. I attempted to mask it off with metal and a piece of that's eight pieces of heavy duty tin foil with a coffee can over the top and this did not work for me. In fact, it just caused the thing to kind of freak out and stay on for the most part. So this isn't going to work for masking either. All right, so with a microwave sensor, you're kind of on your own. If you need to cover it to check its time out, this particular sensor, the SK-807K-DC, will not allow you to do that. Now there are three small adjustments on it. We have a sensitivity adjustment, which I have turned all the way up. We have a timeout 
adjustment which I have set all the way down and I have a daylight sensor there's a small photo cell pickup on here that can be set for five to two hundred lux I believe no two thousand lux so it's got quite a range and they suggest that you put the daylight sensing all the way up to uh, we'll say least sensitive and uh, use that for your testing so let's experiment by placing this close to a window uh, but the window has a metal screen on it so let's see what happens Well, at 5.8 gigahertz and less than 200 milliwatts, I'm sorry, microwatts, this is a, not a powerful device, it has a hard time seeing me through the window and the metal screen. However, there's a wall over here. We're in a corner, and it seems to see me through this corner wall pretty good when I walk outside, which is a bit on the bizarre side, but we'll give that another test. So it's seeing me rather well through the wooden wall and siding. Can we get this to repeat? And the answer is yes. It's seeing me quite well through wallboard and uh, wooden siding without a problem. But anything metallic is going to give the thing a problem. Now, placing the photo sensitivity all the way up truly puts this in test mode because I have direct sunlight falling on the sensor, which, trust me, greatly exceeds. 2000 lux and it's still responding just like that now perched on the wall as it was previously it could see through the wall of the garage which is just siding and it could see a car door opening and closing and a tailgate opening and closing but that was about it. Uh, didn't see human motion through the wall. Perched up on the table here, I'm going to try and check its range. But for humans, I think it's only got a range of about 10 to 12 feet, not the 10 meters as the manufacturer claims. However, for vehicles, it responds to those readily. So if you want to use this to sense vehicles up to 30 feet away, That'll probably work, but for people, only about 10 or 12 feet. Now, sitting here with the thing out in the yard, I can see it experiencing some false triggering. False triggering is a problem with things like microwave sensors, uh, microphonic sensors that listen for sounds of human habitation, and ultrasonics because their signal bounces all over. We're going to not make that a problem in this project because this is going to end up going into a very interesting space that I want to keep safe and ensure that the lights stay out all night long. So we'll be getting to that.